Hi there, this is Tessa from Tales from Outside the Classroom, and today we're going to take a closer look at using Google Forms within Google Classroom. So first I'm going to take you to my test classroom where I do most of these videos and experiment with Classroom a bit. Um, I'm going to walk you through first how to add a Google Form as an assignment for a more in-depth look at using Google Forms or creating and using Classroom. I have two separate videos for those and I will link them here as well. So I clicked the Classwork tab and then I click Create and I'm going to click a regular assignment. By clicking Quiz Assignment, it creates a blank Google Form that you can then click to edit. Me personally, I already have my quizzes ready to go before I get to this point. I'm going to title it and then I'm going to click Add and access it in my drive. So again, like I said, I, I always have that readily accessible. You could also click on link and link to the form itself that way. This is just the way that works for me. So I'm going to go to my drive. Actually, it might. No, it's not my recent. Um, so I'm going to navigate to that correct folder. And attach the form and it shows me here that it's attached. I can add instructions for my students. And then I change the point value here to the number of points the quiz is out of. Classroom does um, their own grading system, so all of your students could see their grades in here if you were completely digital. Um, so for that reason, if you are doing something like that, you might want to keep the points out of 100. For me personally, I like to just have it match what my quiz already has. I can choose which students I assign this to, so it can go to all of them or just students I want to maybe do a informal check on or perhaps these students weren't successful the first time we did a test and we're doing a second version of the test or I want to see if they're ready to take the test so I'm having them do a quick check anything like that. Um, it's nice to be able to choose specific students um, from here. I can change the due date so I can make it any day in the future. I also can um, put it under a specific topic. So I could put this under math, for example, and that's how it gets organized in my class. I don't personally use those, but they are available. I'm going to go ahead and click assign. And then now it is assigned for my students. I already have a form that has been completed and filled out. So I'm going to show you what it looks like to grade that form. So if I'm going to go ahead and click view assignment, it says that I have turned it in and that lets me know it's ready for grading. When you have many students, you are able just to check these students and how they did on it. Um, you can also toggle here by choosing to view just those students who have turned it in, those students who it's assigned, meaning they have not done it yet. You could even look at which students are have their assignment graded. Everything on this side also can is organized in that way under those three categories, but you can sort by student first name, student last name, or by um, that status. So I'm going to go to the form just briefly to show you what it looks like on the student side. So on the student side, this is submitted and it's marked as done. So Google all already communicates that it's done and it gets marked as closed in classroom. As the student, I can open it to look at it or I can view my score. When I view my score, it opens, shows me my score and then it goes through and gives me feedback if that was created as part of the um, part of the quiz. My um, digital centers, I do have that as part of it. So um, that is automatically included with anything that is a straightforward answer, meaning it's um, not so much subjective. So the students can go through and see their scores right away as it's done. From the teacher side though, there are parts of this that I do want to manually grade. So I'm going to go ahead and open the quiz from my point of view as the creator and as the owner of the quiz. And when I do that, I have this responses tab. So I'm going to click there because I'm not editing the quiz. There are several different ways I can look at the reporting features here. I can look at a summary and the summary shows frequently missed questions by um, my class as an average. It shows the total number of points scored by my class and it gives nice average information. 
Then if you can continue scrolling, you can go through each question on its own. You also can click question and look at each um, specific question. So I have this organized into sections. So it begins with just question one name. I can look at question two and look at everybody's responses to question two. So this is helpful if I'm trying to decide if a question maybe wasn't graded fairly um, or worded fairly, or if there's a confusing part of it, if there's an abnormal number of students who are getting this incorrectly. Me personally, I always come to the individual tab um, most often because I look at students' work um, kind of, I want to see how they do overall, and this is where I can go ahead and grade it. So I'm going to go through this with you um, to show you a couple things. So most of these are not open-ended questions, so I'm not going to want to edit the score. The answers were incorrect, and I went ahead and wrote these in here. Um, on, I had incorrect answers in here on purpose, just for the purpose of this video. Um, so I want to scroll down to the real world application. So these open ended questions have a straightforward answer. There didn't need to be a sentence or something like that that needed to be manually graded. However, this one does. So when something needs to be manually graded, it's left marked as wrong by default. It's one of the downsides of Google Classroom. There's not a way to indicate on there something like the students receive this many points and they, um, but this many points still needs to be graded or anything like that. So on this question, I could uh, choose to decide that this was enough to earn both of those points. So I come right over here where it shows that it's blank and I can toggle up for them earning one or toggle up for them earning two. I did not explain what is different about them, so I'm not going to give the um, full credit for this one. I'm only going to give them partial credit because they missed that second part. And then I'm going to go ahead and click save. When I click save, their grade changed to that one um, based on that feedback. So that is helpful because it allows you to change any grades. I will show you the real world application of this in a different way. Um, in just a moment. So I'm going to come over here to um, a quiz I had my students complete and notice it says final score pending because there are open ended questions here. I want to make sure I don't get all the way up to her name. Okay, so I'm going to go through and manually grade this to show you that process. So um, number one and number two, you know what, I think this is an incorrect student. Here we go. So number one is correct. Number two um, is marked wrong. However, this student actually was correct. So I tried to put in when I created the form all of the possible ways a student might write in the answer. Um, again, one of the downsides of Google Forms is if you have it be self-checking, the an your answer has to be very specific. So this student's answer was marked wrong. However, this student really had the right answer. So I can again just toggle over here and click one and that indicates that she got it correct and it changes that score. So I can quickly see by the check mark that the student already got it right and I don't need to take a closer look. So I'm going to slow through quickly. Looking here, she forgot the unit but I don't mark that wrong for my students here especially since we're doing this online and I'm not around to give them that reminder. So I will mark this one right come down. It looks like this was maybe a typo, um, but I'm not going to give her credit for this one um, just because it's not 306 and keep going. This was right and this is open ended. So on this one, she did not add the missing number, but what should she have done instead is not answered. So I'm going to go ahead and click to give her one point. And then I click here to add individual feedback. So on anything that I do, the system, depending on how you create your form, this one I created has feedback on each of them as they go. But I still can go in and manually add feedback based on that student specific work. So um, for example, on the Aryan perimeter one, many students only add two sides for the perimeter instead of all four sides. So I might add that feedback I noticed this, don't forget the perimeter is all four sides or something like that. So I'm going to add the individual feedback here that um, 
she didn't explain what Rose should have done instead. Um, and then click save. So now I have officially graded it and I'm going to click save. Now I that I'm back on top, I have to click this release score. This release score releases the score back to classroom. Um, and I just click send all emails and it goes to um, that student's email. And now that I'm in my class, I come over and click this import grade buttons and import grade allows the grade to connect with classroom and that student can then go back through and not only see their grade, but they also are able to then see their score right within classroom. So you can see that that score has been brought over here and that's the score they have. I then can click here and click return and it sends it back to the student so the student knows that it is complete.